So really 12 is kind of introduction, okay? And the meat or the beef, the beef is in chapter 13. This is where all the problem is. But chapter 12 basically introduced the topic for you, okay? So this is about heat transfer by radiation. That's the mechanism we get the heat, all our heat from the sun. It's just basically by radiation, right? And in our heat, in our uh, power plant, the, the flame basically give most of the heat by radiation to the superheater. So it's a really important mechanism. When we have a fire in the building, the fire catch up a lot of time by radiation, not just by convection. You don't wait until the smoke come up and then heat the ceiling. No, if if the, if the door is on fire and there is curtain here, the curtain will see the flame get hot and fire by itself. Right? Also in forest, fire. You know, they, they, the radiation is really strong mechanism that can catch fire from one side to the other just by seeing the flame. So here we would like to calculate how much is that heat transfer by radiation. Okay? And obviously the radiation does not require any medium between them. Okay? So even... You know, in the old, uh, the old water bottle like this. So the, the old water bottle like this, if you break it in the middle, you will actually see it in two, two container, two cylinder, outer cylinder, inner cylinder. And in, in between them, they used to have vacuum, right? So they, they can kill all the convection. And on top of being vacuum, between the outer and inner cylinder, the metal, the, the, the two surfaces are also covered with silver, or at least very, very shiny. Why? Because they also don't want to see the to happen between the outer and the inner cylinder. So they kill the conduction of the air, and also they kill the radiation by making it very silvery. Okay? So this way, the, the container remains cold or hot forever. So basically, it's really very, very well insulated from the outer cylinder, right? And so he tried to explain to us that the radiation we are getting from the sun, that electromagnetic wave, is not just one color. It has different wavelengths, okay? That's important when you are trying to basically insulate or finding out how much heat will come into the glass of your car. You have to realize that the radiation coming from the sun is not just one wavelength. Also, when you are trying to build a a solar collector on top of your roof to heat the water for your swimming pool. That glass will treat different wavelengths differently. Okay? The transmissivity of the glass is basically different for different wavelengths. And so that's why in a greenhouse or in your car it gets super hot compared to the outside because the, the glass works as basically one way valve. He allowed the radiation coming from the sun into the car, but he wouldn't allow the radiation from the car to go out. So the seats get hot and hot and hot, huh? To the extent that I remember when I was in Egypt, I couldn't really get into my car. If I leave the glass door closed, there is no way you can touch the driving wheel. This is how hot it is, right? And so you basically open the car and, and you stay away from it until it get cooled a little bit. This is how hot it gets. So again, why? Because the wavelengths of the radiation from the sun is different from the wavelengths of the radiation from the car. Why is that? Because the temperature is different. Okay, so the, the sun is sitting at almost thousands of degree. But the car, no matter how hot it is, we are complaining, it will not go beyond hundreds of degree Fahrenheit. 200, 140, 110, it will not go to thousands. So the radiation leaving is different, okay? Actually, each one of you is also radiating, but because your temperature huh, is not that hot, your radiation is, is a certain wavelength. It's infrared. So that's why I don't see you with my eye in the dark, okay? Because my eye is busy optimized for the wavelengths of the sun. I can only see the, the, the visible range of the radiation. But if I put an infrared Google in my, on my glasses, then I can see all of you in the dark. I will see the, your radiation. Okay? You'll show up as red, 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 red. Right? Okay. And he basically over here is saying that the, uh, so the wavelengths and the frequency, they are basically inversely proportional to each other, of course. Right? And so here's the equation. C is the uh, 
the speed of, of light. And so lambda and, and nu, the frequency is basically inverse proportional. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. And the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. So which one you think have more energy? The shorter wavelengths with higher frequency or the longer wavelengths with lower, shorter, right? So the solar, the solar photovoltaic panels that we use to generate electricity, they work on the short wavelengths. The long wavelengths is not really that useful for them. It doesn't have, every photon doesn't have enough energy to kick an electron out of an atom to generate current. But the shorter wavelengths, the blue and the violet and stuff, those will have enough energy to kick a photon out of the of that. All right? So he basically saying, well, here is the, the range of wavelengths. And our, our visible range is the, the one that our eye sees is basically very limited. Okay? And you have the this side and that side. Okay? So everyone is radiating, but in different wavelengths. And, and here is the wavelength of the colors. Okay? So the green 0.49 to 0.54. So that green is basically the peak of the, it's around the peak of the, of the sun radiation. And it's also the peak of our sensitivity. So our eye is really tuned for the sun. So we are most sensitive to the, to the green. And the sun also radiates mostly in the green. Okay. And he introduced something topic called the, the black body. So a black body is a fictitious. There is no black body. But the black body radiation is the ideal. It's like the current cycle of the radiation. So if you are black body, you at temperature 1000 degree, for example, you will be radiating more than anything else at the same temperature. And that radiation, that black body radiation, that dream is sigma multiplied by t to power 4. And a very common mistake is to make T in degree centigrade. No, T need to be in Kelvin. Okay, so remember that. So sigma T to power 4. So that T to power 4 tell you that the, once the temperature gets really hot, that's why the radiation becomes very, very effective mechanism. And what's sigma? Sigma is the easiest constant ever to memorize. Okay, you will not forget that constant. 5.67 to power, multiply by 10 to power minus 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, what? Per meter square Kelvin. Kelvin to power 4. So that's why when you multiply the sigma to t to power 4, you get what? Per meter square. So that what? Per meter square, that's how much radiation per unit area. Per unit surface area. You multiply by the area and you get the radiation leaving the surface. Okay? So this is the black body radiation. So my my jacket, I mean it's black, but the radiation is not black body radiation. I, I will get a ratio of this black body radiation. That ratio is the epsilon. We will multiply this number by an epsilon and we will call it basically the gray body radiation. And so everyone have this epsilon. Every surface have an epsilon that basically tell how close he is to the black body radiation. All right? So again, it's the black body is the perfect emitter and absorber. And also look at this. It's uniform radiating everywhere the same way. Normal surfaces will have a dominant mechanism. If the radiation is, if you, for example, reflecting the light, the light will be mainly, if it's coming from the right, you would basically be emitting to the left. But a black body would basically absorb the light and radiate uniformly everywhere. Okay? And, and here is the, the sun radiation. Look at this. The, so the sun radiation is the black, let me make this bigger. So the, the solid, the solid line here, you see this? This is the sun radiation. And the dashed line over here, that's a black radiation, black body radiation at 5,780 Kelvin. So that basically tell you that the sun is almost a black body at 5,780 Kelvin. Okay, so this is what you get if you are sitting next to the sun. However, when you come to the Earth's surface here on the ground, we only get this. Okay, so notice how the peak is basically around the, the green. What was the green color again? Does anyone remember from that chart? It was 
it's around 0.532 nanometer or basically 530 okay it's five, 530 532 nanometer or 0.532 micrometer so it's that's basically the green in this place anyway so why why we don't get the radiation that the sun is sending what happened Right, the atmosphere, exactly. So that's our atmosphere. Okay? And he's basically telling you that certain wavelengths are being killed by certain stuff in our atmosphere. So, for example, the ozone, O3, ozone layer, it's really helping because we are not really uh, friendly to the ultraviolet radiation. We, don't, we, we can get cancer, skin cancer out of it. So the ozone layer is really good for us that we have it so that it can kill this part. Right? So certain wavelengths are basically being killed by certain molecules in our atmosphere. Okay? So, again, that, the, that glass house effect in your car, why the car gets really super hot? Because uh, the radiation gets in but doesn't get out. It turns out that CO2 and H2O, they do the same thing. They could let the radiation coming from the sun but then when the sun's surface basically gets hot and he would like to radiate back, the CO2 and H2 in the atmosphere plug them and trapping basically our, our radiation in. Okay? So it, the records show, I've seen this in many papers, the records show that the CO2 level in our atmosphere is really much higher than before. Okay? Way higher than before. In the old, when they start recording, basically. And so that's the concern that they are saying, well, if the CO2, now, why the CO2 is increasing that high, whether it's man-made or just, that's another issue. But yes, the CO2 level has increased so much, and that basically increased this uh, greenhouse effect. All right? So we trap more heat. And they, they see this basically on the ice. And the North Pole, when they record the ice year after year, they see how the ice cap basically is getting smaller and smaller. So obviously it's, it's getting a little bit warmer. So why is it that water is on there in four different places? Say that again. Why is water on there in four different places? So the, the air molecule and the, wa the water molecule basically absorb certain wavelengths. It has certain wavelengths that it really absorb more than the others. Okay, so it actually is absorbing four different wavelengths. Right, it has a spectrum of its absorption. Yes. Right. So, so basically, the, the black body radiation, that sigma t to power 4, is not done at one wavelength. The sun, when it, the sun sitting at 5,000 Kelvin emit its radiation, this doesn't come at just one wavelength here. All your radiation is going to be green. No, it gives you a spectrum, right? And that spectrum is plotted. So here is the equation for that spectrum. Okay, there are two constants. But you can see that the spectrum as function of the wavelengths is really a function of T. So the sp spectrum is function of lambda and T. Right? So as you get hotter and hotter, like the sun, this is what you emit. And as you get colder, 100 Kelvin, that's pretty cool, you basically emit more into the infrared rather than the ultraviolet. So when, when you have a piece of, of, of uh, iron in a furnace and the, the process basically say we have to heat this piece of iron up to 2000 degree and then we quench it in water and then that's basically part of the treatment to make say steel. You can tell the temperature of that piece of iron inside the furnace by looking at it and telling its color. They could actually have on the window a color chart, and you can shift the color chart until you don't see the piece of iron anymore with the background. It's kind of disappeared. It's the same orange. So because, so again, that piece of iron does not emit at one wavelength. But it's the, when you add all of them, you basically see a certain light. Okay? So when, when the radiation is like this, and you mix all those things, your eye will catch a certain color. All right? So then, the, the, the color 
on top of also that you can also measure how much the the wave the, the radiation that's coming but the color basically can tell you is it 1000 or 1000 or 2000 or 1500 right so so service less than 800 kelvin that's us mainly emit in the infrared radiation okay and under that curve when you get, collect all those guys that's the sigma t to power 4. So the sigma t to power 4, that's the whole deal. But it's divided over different wavelengths. Okay? Now, that incident radiation, when it hit a surface with all those different lengths, to start with, the reflection and the absorption are different for different wavelengths, let alone transmission. So transmission or for only transparent surface. Opaque surface don't transmit anything. They either absorb or reflect. But transparent surfaces like glass, plastic, clear plastic, they let things go through them. All right? And so those depend on the on the wavelengths. Alright? So basically saying that the surface that reflect mainly red surface, red color appear red to our eye. Okay? And so a surface that basically absorb everything would appear black or so that's why we like to wear black in the winter. And that's why in the desert people wear white. 